Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So I cannot believe that this is going to be my third video on Sandbox and I want to stress I am not sponsored by Padlet. So because Padlet have made quite a few updates in the last week on Sandbox, I thought let's just explore this together. So if you're interested in finding out all of the new functionalities with the recently launched Sandbox, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I really want to stress I'm not sponsored by Padlet. I've just been using it for a very long time. I was using it when it was still called Wallwisher, probably over 10 years. And I think the company's only been around for 12. So I must have been one of the first few people to really just love this tool. And I absolutely love what they've done. So let me move myself out of the way. When you actually now go onto your Padlet dashboard, you can see introducing Padlet Sandbox. And I know that they're giving everyone free access until Google Jamboard disappears. I know some of you are lamenting over the demise of Google Jamboard, but trust me, this is a wonderful alternative. So I'm going to create my own, my first sandbox, which is not my first. Anyway, it's got new functions that I, I'm excited to explore. So let's just press on that. Okay, so I can already see that the user interface is completely different in terms of there are set plus 17 new functionalities, which was not there last week. So I really am excited to explore this. And then I'm also going to give three different ideas of how to use Sandbox that I think really harnesses what this tool can do. Okay, so let's press this. Okay, this was not here last week. I'm gonna move myself out of the way. So here, we've got a whole menu of different things. Uh, we've got Google Drive, I can't draw. We can put the poll on. I, sometimes I like to just put a quick anonymous poll. So if people wanna vote to do one thing or another, I think it's important to give our learners and teachers as well choice when they're on their learning journey. Um, we can actually upload link. There's a video audio recorder. I love that and how this tool is giving more accessibility to neurodiverse and, and students of different backgrounds. Um, there's the image search, the GIF, the YouTube, location web search and Spotify. I mean, a lot of these are already on a normal Padlet wall. So I'm not going to really explore this, but this just, you know, adds so much value, I think, to your sandbox. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to discuss three ways that I'm going to use Sandbox. I'm still going to keep all of my palette walls and all my bookshelves. So I've got lots of bookshelves where I like to showcase the learning of the teachers that I get to collaborate with. The bookshelf serves as a wonderful learning wall so that we can actually see everyone's learning journey over the time that we're together and beyond. What I'm really interested in is these post-it notes. I think every teacher like me is probably obsessed with post-it notes. I mean, I have a whole drawer full of post-it notes. Just the ability to be able to move them around and as you're engaging in the creative process is really important. Let me just press, uh, I like the purple one. So I'm gonna press the purple one. I found out last time as well that if I press the hand, I can do this. Now I can see little handles here. What does that do? Oh, that just like duplicates. So like uh, among any of the handles. So that's actually really nice to do, be able to do that. So what is the best way to use a sandbox? I think a sandbox has a completely different purpose to the other templates and the other types types of Padlet Wars. For me, I think this is about brainstorming and really adopting a social constructivist environment. So let's say we're engaging in the visible thinking routine, generate, sort, connect. So you're going to ask everyone to generate their ideas. Maybe it's to do with fractions. Maybe it's to do with inquiry. Maybe it's to do with concepts. You know, what do we think a concept is or what does good learning look like? There are lots of examples. And then once everyone's generated their ideas, we sort them so we can start moving them around and say, well, here's one category here and here's another category here. So if you can just imagine what this is like, and I've got lots of examples of these on Jamboards, which I'm now going to migrate to Sandbox. And then we're gonna connect these ideas that we've actually sorted, and we're gonna categorize them. So generate, sort, connect. We're connecting all of these ideas, and then maybe we'll write a sentence about this group or this cluster. I love using generate, sort, connect to brainstorm ideas and to really value the prior understanding and learning and experiences that people bring into 
to our learning space. So generate.connect, that's one way. Um, another way that I would actually use the sandbox is probably for empathy maps. So I adopt the design thinking process in probably every aspect of my life, if you know me. And uh, that process starts off with empathize. And so let's say we have an empathy map and there's lots of different templates for empathy maps. Uh, I usually use Miro or Mural, but I think I'm gonna start migrating here. And if I can have a suggestion for Padlet, if you have some templates of empathy maps or some templates for design thinking, which I know Canva have as well. So I could easily just import an image from Canva, but just a suggestion, that would be a lot easier. I can just use the design thinking template and here's the empathy map. And then we can start brainstorming ideas and empathize from the user or learner's perspective. So that's the second way using empathy maps. And the third way is actually just any visible thinking routine, whether that's part of the lesson or learning process, or whether that's at the end of the process, or whether it's asynchronous, you know, asking students what they think. So each student or each teacher has their own post-it note and they either write their shift in thinking or they write their perspective or their un current understanding or some of their challenges and, and how they wanna conquer that. And then if we're in a live workshop, I always like to give people the choice of whether they want to share their thinking with the entire group because you know not everyone's an extrovert it's so important that we value introverts and introverts may not want to speak in front of everybody but they've still contributed on your sandbox so I give everyone the choice of recoloring it so if you just press here let's say I'm gonna say please color your post green if you would like to share with the group. And that means that if we're live, that person will share with the group in front of us, or if we're virtually, then that person unmutes and then they share that idea. So they were three ideas of how I would actually use Sandbox. And you can see that they've updated the interface with all of the functionalities that they had on a normal Padlet wall. And those three are a Generate Sort Connect, which actually is a visible thinking routine. Uh, number two, empathy maps and using them for design thinking. And then number three, any visible thinking routine, of course. And there's a whole collection of them from Harvard's Project Zero. So I really hope that you enjoy using Sandbox. I'm so happy. Thank you, Padlet, once again. I'm not sponsored by them. I just think that they're an absolutely wonderful tool and I'm going to continue to be advocating and using Padlet and Sandbox in particular. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.